everybody wants more confidence. What if there were six traits that could double yours? We're going over those in the six pillars of self-esteem. What's up guys, Clark, back from ClarkDanger.com. Welcome to our little show where we take and condense the best books out there down from two, three, 400 pages into 20 minutes. This week, we got Nathaniel Brandon's The Six Pillars of Self-Esteem. Basically says that, look, all self-awareness, all self-worth, everything in our life is derived from how we feel about us. Our entire mental well-being, how we see the world, our worldview is derived from within. And if we constantly walk around having low self-esteem, we're not going to have great relationships because we don't feel like we're worthy of having them. We're not going to have confidence to excel in our jobs or entrepreneurship or whatever we want to do because we don't feel like we deserve it. We're not going to make money because it's evil and we're not supposed to have any, right? So whatever beliefs we have, self-esteem can almost be the root of all of it. So we're going to go over the six pillars of self-esteem now. Be sure you're listening for your favorite idea to post in the comment down below, an idea you disagree with to post in the comment down below or something that uh, if you've read the book, we forgot in this video. All right, let's get cranking now on the six pillars of self-esteem. The first one, arrogance versus self-esteem. When you board a plane, the flight attendant's doing their safety drills up on front, right? And she instructs you about the oxygen masks, that those pop down in case of an emergency. And what she says is that you should put your mask on first because you got about three seconds When you're 30,000 feet in the air, the cabin rips open, you got three seconds before you pass out. So if you don't have oxygen on, it doesn't matter how much of a hero you are, you can't help anyone else around you until you've done that yourself. They even tell you to do that before your kids sitting next to you can't put on theirs. If we don't help ourselves first, we're of no use to anyone else around us. The same goes with self-esteem. If we don't feel good about ourselves, no one else is going to feel good about us too. It's contagious. If we don't have the inner self-confidence, no one else is going to be confident in us. Maybe if they are, it's going to be hard for us to accept it if we don't feel like we deserve it. So arrogance versus self-esteem. Ultimately, we got to get self-esteem. We don't want arrogance. Remember, uh, Nathaniel says that arrogance is comparison-based. How am I doing compared to X, Y, and Z? Versus self-esteem is more self-love-based. It's putting your mask on first and giving more instead of trying to take, trying to compare, and trying to be better. Point number two, kill your inner pessimist. Nathaniel Brandon goes over signs of low self-esteem. Three of them. A, self-fulfilling prophecies. So thinking, you know, this always happens. I knew this was going to happen. B, self-sabotage. So purposely messing up. You're on a diet. You purposely eat the cheesecake. You said you were going to stop smoking. You pull over to the gas station and buy a pack. C, nothing is enough. Not being satisfied, that's a sign of low self-esteem. Feeling like it's never good enough, feeling like you never hit your mark, feeling like you never made it, that's low self-esteem. We got to realize that confidence and self-esteem, believing in ourselves, is almost, it's not almost, it's not a natural state. It isn't. And that we're wired to be a pessimist. Why? Because our brains are 2 million years old. And they're not designed to make us feel great about ourselves all the time and confidence and and go out and achieve things, their first priority is to keep us alive and make us survive. So we have all these distinctions in our brain, and one of those is looking for every threat, every potential threat in our immediate environment, right? So you're looking around you all day, and your brain's saying, there's something wrong. There's an area where you're self-sabotaging. There's where there's not enough. Uh, Fill in the blank. And so we got to kill that inner pessimist if we want more confidence, if we want more self-esteem. We can't have that inner track playing of our two million year old brain that's constantly trying to make us feel like there's a threat in the future. If you have that inner pessimist there, right, it's never going to go away. It isn't. I mean, you can talk to the most confident public speakers and they'll tell you they still get nervous before they go on. Uh, Who was it? Tiger Woods. He said, I always get nervous before I have a tournament because uh, that's how I know I care. And the day that I don't get nervous is the day I quit. You know, best golfer in the world said that he's terrified. He's throwing up before he goes on tournaments. Um, so it's not that you will never have fear. It's learning how to re- reprogram it. So with self-esteem, 
It's not that you're always going to feel confident 24-7 walking around kick-ass take names, no. But what it's saying is that that inner pessimist, we got to find ways to reduce it using these next six pillars. Pillar number one, living consciously. The other day, I was driving to work, and I miraculously end up in a parking spot, and I almost like jolt awake. Have you ever done that? And and you just wonder, how did I even drive here? Like, I, I, I was on autopilot the entire time getting to this parking spot, getting to the space. You've done it so many times, it's so automatic, you, you don't have to expend much energy driving the same route every single day. And the reality is, what Nathaniel's saying is that most people go through life like that. They don't have self-esteem because they're not fully immersed in what they're doing. He's saying that if we want self-esteem, we gotta practice being in the moment, living consciously, and that everything else will follow from that because we're so engaged in what we're doing. We come back to it nearly every video, but the number 32,850, that is the amount of days we have till 90. We got to not be on autopilot because those are a lot less than you probably thought. It's a lot less than I thought, right? You know, we had a dollar for every day. We'd only have 32,000 bucks at the end of our life. Spend it however you want. Put it on black, maybe double it. When you look back on time, I, I've been finding that the years are short, but the days are long. A day can feel like forever, but a year goes by just like that. Before we know it, they're going to be up. We can't live on autopilot, and we just got to live consciously. That's pillar number one. Pillar number two, this is self-acceptance. One of my favorite sayings comes from psychologists that there's two kinds of people they see. There are the kinds of people who need tightening. These are the celebrities who are off the rails, you know, go to celebrity rehab. This is the guy who's having a midlife crisis, spends his inheritance buying a, I don't know, sports car, whatever. They need to tighten up. They need more structure. They need more rigidness. But the other type of people psychologists see are the kinds that need loosening. This is way more common. If we don't have self-esteem or we do, we lack in confidence, it's because we're too tight. Remember, we're too in our head. We're, we're too stiff. We're too rigid. And if we just loosened up, if we just let go... We'd have everything would start flowing more. So self-acceptance, what Nathaniel's saying here, is that we gotta loosen up. We gotta be that second kind of person. What he's saying is that we gotta improve on what we can change and accept on what we can't change. Great way to look at this, you know, with self-acceptance going on that pillar, is would you hang out with you? Would you? Like, okay, say, say that person in your head all day, those constant negative thoughts. Say that was an actual person, an actual friend who was saying to you, Oh, if you ask out that girl, she'll say no, reject you and slap you in the face. Or, oh, well, you're never going to make money because you spend it and you can't save any. Or, oh, you're always going to be unhappy in that job because that's what you deserve. Would you hang out with that person? If someone was actually saying all those things the way we do inside, we'd want to kick their ass, right? <laughs> Pillar number three, self-responsibility. You know, there's that famous study, I believe Martin Seligman was in on it. Um, of the dogs, the shock experiment it was. I can't remember off the top of my head. Basically, they had two dogs and they had a, a cage that had a series of shocks whenever they administered it. One dog could move away and escape the shocks. The other dog could not move away no matter where he went. It would always shock him. Now, what they found is when they uh, administered the same shocks, you know, obviously the dog that could move away started to move away but the dog who couldn't stayed there and remained stuck. Now this is the fascinating part. When they took both dogs out and moved them to different cages the next day, what they found was the dog who could escape shocks was perfectly fine, but the dog who, had, who could not escape the shocks cowered up and basically gave up in the corner. And this is what they called learned helplessness. That when we have no control over our environment, we give up and we go into victimhood, and it's a lot harder to escape whatever shock we're going through in our life. Self-responsibility, pillar number three, point number five, is all about being 100% responsible at all times. That doesn't mean we have to fake positivity. That doesn't mean we have to ignore whatever bad thing is happening. It just means we can't be like that second dog, and we gotta get up and keep fighting and pushing forward. Pillar number four, this is self-assertiveness. The quote here, he says that self-assertiveness means the willingness to stand up for myself, to be who I am openly, to treat myself with respect in all human encounters. What this pillar is all about is believing in yourself. And I know that sounds as cheeseball as it can get, but if you don't believe in yourself, no one else is. You teach people how to treat you. 
and that um, if there's something going on in your life that you're not 100% okay with, it's at some level we're tolerating it, that we teach people how to treat us. If we don't stand up for ourselves, we're going to get walked all over. This could be in a relationship, you know, you don't stand up for yourself and you're having issues, you're setting the precedent in the future that this is how we communicate. I've seen that over and over again, and even in my personal relationships, right? I didn't stand up for myself enough, and then the same problem arises, and it gets shut down over and over again, right? You see this all the time in workplaces. Someone is walking all over the other person, and it could be a superior, inferior, inferior, superior, whatever, and you teach people how to treat you. So self-assertiveness is standing up for yourself, is holding yourself to your standards, but also holding other people to your standards. And if you don't like a certain behavior, I mean, choose your battles. Don't go after everything. Be okay with some level of healthy confrontation. And you get self-esteem when you stand up for yourself and when you're on your own team and when you teach people how to treat you. Pillar five, this is living purposefully. If we want self-esteem, we need to have a goal. We need to be striving towards something. Goals make us feel great. And what makes you feel better is growth. When it boils down to one thing, we're either growing or we're dying, or we're dying. This is a bit from Tony Robbins. You know, I love it. He says, look around you right now. Every single thing around us on this world is either growing or dying. You look at nature. uh, You look at plants. You know, the leaves are growing, and then when they stop growing, they fall to the ground and they die to make room for other things that will grow from them. Living purposefully is about having goals, about growing. That's what this whole channel is about, right? If we could sum it up in one word, it's growing. If you need a great place to get goals or you're looking for clarity or looking for purpose, we have the 11 questions, change your life. This is a free ebook we put out on this channel. Thousands of people have done this by now and it's all centered around growing. Um, That's a great place to go for clarity. And then also mybestjournal.com. This is the program that will take you start to finish on I think is the best method for personal growth. And that is using a journal as a tool for personal growth. Just as you'd go to the gym and lift weights to get stronger, those are your tools. We use our journal in this method and we do a system to take it as your tool for personal growth, okay? Pillar number six, this is personal integrity. Personal integrity is about holding you to higher standards for yourself. You know, I'll never forget growing up, Uh, I was in the sports, I think swimming, and the coach said, Clark, character is what you do when no one's looking. And it's kind of cheesy, but it always, always, always never left me. And I know you have some of those moments in your life where someone says a one-liner or someone says a quote, and it just always sticks in your head. Character is what you do when no one's looking. And for the next, you know, that was probably 10 years ago, 12, 13 years ago. For the next 10, 13 years, every single time I'm like in my... Uh, I'm in my apartment and it's, you put the dish down in the sink. Do you leave it for your roommate to take care of when he's not looking? No, you pick it up because character is what you do when no one's looking. You go the extra mile with it. When you can jet out 10, 20 minutes early from work, do you do that? No, because character is what you do when no one's looking. You stay, you put in the extra mile, you have your personal integrity. Personal integrity is just being aligned with how you you what you say and what you act and there's nothing more stressful i can tell you from personal experience than talking about ideas and not applying them um so personal integrity means walking the talk it means it means doing that the best you can and a lot of you who watch this channel you know that i'm very open with my shortcomings i don't want to be some guy just talking in a flashy suit on camera for you um i'm open i'm transparent with all the things i'm i'm not striving towards or I'm not achieving and we post videos all the time about that on this channel so personal integrity doesn't mean you have to be on it 100% of the time it just means look if you're not you can be honest about that and have that self-acceptance from pillar number one but just more importantly is to have the integrity to even admit that step number nine ditch the need to look important Nathaniel Brandon says to find it humiliating to attempt an error is a certain sign of flawed self-esteem. Basically saying, look, if we make a mistake, just own it, own up to it. Don't be afraid to look stupid. Don't be afraid to admit when you're not where you want to be or don't be afraid to admit mistakes. Number 10, these are the top affirmations and mindsets. Affirmations are a great way to say out loud uh, things that you want to believe. And there's there's something that changes uh, 
not to get woo woo, but it really is a belief shift when you say something out loud and you hear it to yourself. It's way more powerful than when you just read it or you say it in your head. If you've never tried affirmations or incantations or any of that stuff, next time you're driving in a car alone or you have the house to yourself, try some of these or look some online or make your own and really feel it. And it, it's, it's amazing the power of speaking when you have that level of conviction, how it sounds. So I'm going to give you some that Nathaniel goes over in the book and um, maybe jot one or two, two of these down in the comments or in your journal or in your phone and, and do them next time you're driving. But listen to which one stands out for you. All right, here we go. I have the right to exist. I am of high value to myself. I'm not here on earth to live up to someone else's expectations. My life belongs to me. I am lovable. I am admirable. I deserve to be treated courteously and with respect by everyone. If people treat me discourteously or disrespectfully, it is a reflection on them, not me. It is only a reflection on me if I accept their treatment. No other individual or group has the power to determine how I will think or feel about myself. I am worthy of happiness. I am enough. I am able to rise again from defeat. I have the right to make mistakes. That is one of the ways I learn. Mistakes are not grounds for self-damnation. The Six Pillars of Self-Esteem. There you go. Fantastic book. Good read. Next week, I do not know what book we are doing, so it's uh, up, up in the air. Be sure you comment down below if you have a suggestion. Also, be sure you comment down below. I'll announce the winner of the free My Best Journal Ultimate Guide to Keeping a Journal course, where we walk you through on how to start, keep, and master a journal. Again, that's at mybestjournal.com membership site. Um, priced it very affordable, so it's not something you're going to have to break the bank to, to go do. Might be raising the price in the future, but for now, it's over there at mybestjournal.com. You can learn more over there about how to master journaling. The number one thing you can do to really know yourself better and get more self-esteem. That is it. Be sure you like this video, subscribe for more, and until next time, stop settling, start living. I'll see you later.